So Donald Trump back in court yesterday, this time testifying, though briefly, in the defamation damages trial involving writer E. Jean Carroll. He's expected to be in court again today for closing arguments. Trump was scolded by Judge Lewis Kaplan before he took the stand for an outburst he had while his attorney, Alina Haba, was talking to the judge about the limits of Trump's testimony. Before the jury was brought inside the courtroom, Judge Kaplan reiterated the verdict of the previous trial found Trump liable for defamation and sexual abuse, restricting what Trump could say on the stand yesterday. When Trump finally did take the stand, his testimony lasted only about three minutes, and he defied the limits placed on his testimony twice in three minutes, mm. calling the abuse accusations false and prompting the judge to order the jury to disregard Trump's statements. Last year, a jury found Trump sexually abused and defamed Carroll. This trial is to determine the amount of damages Carroll will now receive. Let's bring in former litigator and MSNBC legal analyst Lisa Rubin, who was inside the courtroom yesterday. Lisa, good morning. So only about three minutes on the stand for Donald Trump. What was it like in the courtroom? It was extraordinarily tense and intense, Willie, when Donald Trump took the stand. I think it was a day that I and many other legal analysts on this network told you was never going to happen. And it sort of didn't happen, right? Because he was only on the stand in his direct for about three minutes. And all of the questions that he answered are ones that voters and jurors have heard him answer multiple times before. There was nothing new added by Donald Trump taking the stand other than the assuaging of his ego and perhaps the opportunity for him to say very loudly when he left the courtroom, this is not America, this is not America, this is not America, because he doesn't understand that litigation is essentially a well-regulated game and it has rules. And he and his lawyers have repeatedly not played by those rules and those have consequences. They certainly do. And, and the judge made sure that the jury knew exactly what Donald Trump had found libel of, right? I mean, in the most graphic terms, after he was lying and saying that it was, you know, all this was just, you know, a witch hunt. Talk about that. Well, Joe, that's going to happen again today at much greater length when after closing arguments and each side has told Judge Kaplan they only expect to take about one hour each. Judge Kaplan will then deliver a much longer set of jury instructions. And part of those jury instructions will be to say to the jury in greater exposition what he said to the parties yesterday. Mr. Trump has already been found liable for sexually assaulting Ms. Carroll by forcibly inserting his fingers into her vagina. That is the fact. That is a fact found by a jury of nine of his peers last May, six men, three women. And he will also tell them that that same jury found Donald Trump liable for defaming Ms. Carroll by denying the truth of those allegations. Again, today's jury, the decision for them turns on not whether Donald Trump defamed E. Jean Carroll, but how much damage he did to her, not only by making his initial statements in June of 2019 when he was still president, but then continuing to double down on those statements for years thereafter starting after the verdict last May when he went on CNN and denied it on stage with Caitlin Collins and then has continued to do it almost daily since. We obviously have seen footage of him doing it last week in New Hampshire. We have numerous and copious truth social posts in which he's doing it again and again and again. And the plaintiff's lawyers here were very successful in introducing some of the worst of those statements to this jury. So Lisa Trump is expected to be back in courtroom again today as closing arguments begin. Give us a sense as to what we might hear in the respect of closing arguments and just what's the timeline going forward? When do we think the jury will get this and when could they reach a decision? Well, let me start with what I think we'll hear today. I think from E. Jean Carroll's lawyers, we will hear them go through the evidence that they adduced about the damage done to her. And I want to make sure, John, that you and our viewers understand, it's not just about the damage done to her reputationally. They had an expert come on and say, reputationally, the damage to E. Jean Carroll would cost between 7 and $12 million to repair. But she's also experienced severe emotional pain and suffering from the sort of death threats and rape threats that have come into her, as she testified, almost daily since his defamation began four years ago, roughly four plus years ago. So we'll hear that from her lawyers asking the jury to really put a dollar amount on that, the emotional harm in addition to the reputation, and then ask the jury the most consequential question of all.
What will it take to make Donald Trump stop? How much money will it take in punitive damages to punish him for his ongoing misconduct? On Trump's side, what they will say is E. Jean Carroll wanted to be famous. She publicized this story. Going forward was her choice. She assumed some of that risk. And Donald Trump can't be solely responsible for it. In the same way, her reputation was enhanced in certain circles. They have argued that E. Jean Carroll has become a celebrity, a, a liberal cause, a Hollywood party goer, in part because she has brought these allegations against Donald Trump. They're going to say, you jury should offset those damages against the way in which this woman has been enhanced in our community. I know that sounds farcical, but the way in which she's been elevated in our community by these allegations. And then in terms of the timing, I think we'll see the jury start to deliberate this afternoon. Jurors notoriously, as our colleague Danny Savalos told you last hour, hate to come back after a weekend. Judge Kaplan has made provisions for them to have meals late into the night tonight. I think if it takes them staying after hours tonight to reach a verdict and they believe that they're deliberating in good faith and getting toward one, we could see a verdict later on tonight. If not, we'll come back wow. Monday and we'll see what they do then. Yeah, and Lisa, they, in, the, in the first trial, they did come back within hours, so we they know did. that juries can do that. They can come back quickly, and they may well do that in this case. Put some kind of numbers on this of what would look like a victory for E. Jean Carroll and her lawyers, and what would look like more of a victory for Donald Trump. What's, what's the kind of scale of compensation of damages that we're looking at here? Well, first of all, Caddy, we're looking at something far more than what she was awarded last time, where the award was $5 million based on her sexual assault and defamation claims solely stemming from <clears throat> one incident in October of 2022. But you and I both know the first time you tell a lie, it's far more damaging, right? So I think what we're looking at here is E. Jean Carroll's lawyers asking for somewhere in the range of $20 plus million to compensate her for her injuries and then somewhere in the range of four, five, six times that even with respect to punitive damages. It's not clear to me that they will actually ask for a specific amount or even multiplier of the compensatory damages. Rather, they may say to the jury, think about what this guy told you in his own words in the deposition clips we showed you. He told you he was worth billions and billions of dollars in his brand alone. He told you he has more than $400 million of cash on hand. Make it hurt.